So okay, so I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of summarize. I guess we'll go into what the first conference was, kind of summarize it for the people who weren't at the first conference, because then it wouldn't make sense for me going to the second part and no one understand all the pieces. So um, we basically went over the idea of artists controlling their own fan base. The one thing I say to everybody is because I hear a lot of people they'll say, well. The promoters should bring the fans or whatever like that. But if you don't control your own fan base, you don't control when you do shows, how you do shows, what merch you sell, or anything. What happens is, is the promoter then controls everything you do. If the promoter wants to book you, then they book you. If they want you to do whenever you want to do a show, you just can't go do a show. And I tell people to stay relevant in the industry. You probably need to hit each place that you go to, each city that you go to, probably once a quarter. So that's the only way to constantly stay in their face because face time is the most important thing in comparison to what the industry has. The industry has the ability to constantly stay on the internet in front of their fans' faces all day because they pay all the amount of money so they can stay on top of Instagram, on top of YouTube, on top of Spotify, so you have to hear them all day on the radio, all day everywhere. So the only thing that's stronger than that form of face time with consumer is actual face time that you have with a consumer. So that would be an actual show. So if you actually can beat their amount of work ethic, then it comes down to the idea of it just being music. And as I said in the last conference, I said, if we believe that all these artists make better music than all of us, then the conversation is dead. Because then you're basically saying there's no way that you can compete with French Montana and them because they're just too much better. You know what I'm saying? But I think, personally, a lot of us make music better than what's on the radio. So then you put yourself in a space where the competition with the consumer's ear then becomes who's actually better because you have this much face time. Inside this idea, we came up with a blueprint, and that's what this app is all about. We came up with a blueprint, and I tell artists, there's ticket levels to this idea. And to some people, they'll say, oh, man, i got to sell tickets or whatever like that. Here's the idea. If you sell real tickets, you have a real fan base. And within that, people get into the spot of, well, what's the one-to-one -one deal of that ticket? Can I actually make money off tickets? In that idea, you really can't live off of ticket sales. The idea is what I'm teaching is that you get a real fan base and you can take this situation and you can get to the point where you get paid to do a show. You get $1,000 to come outside the house. You get $2,000, but that's because you have a real fan base. That's when someone will actually pay you that much to be like, yo, this person brings 500 to 1,000 people. So I'm willing to pay this person $1,000 to come out or $2,000 to come out. That's the goal of this. And then also on top of that, which we'll talk about later, is the sponsorship amount that you make for the consumers that you have as fans. So you always want to control your fan base because then you can take those consumers and if you tell a business that's around here, you can tell them, hey, I can bring this many people around or I can get this many people to wear your product or eat your food or anything like that. They all need those consumers. It's the same as Sprite needing Drake or the NBA using Coca-Cola uh, Coca as the only drink there. It's the same exact logic. But these companies can't afford to pay all these big companies $10 million and $20 million, but they can pay you $2,000 or $1,000 or $10,000, because you're gonna be willing to be like, yo, this is my career, this is what I wanna live on. So the whole idea of our app is to build these careers for everyone to live off of. As we've said before, it's around 1,000 people to actually, 1,500 to 2,000 people to actually claim they really live off of music. And then from there, it's 30 million artists that just hobby this. And we have to close that gap to a point where a lot of us are able to live off this because I feel this is a viable job just as anything else that is around. The only problem is that the industry controls all of it. So the industry makes it so you only have these outlets of Spotify, which pays you 0 0.005. Every million plays, you might make four grand. And then you have the, the, the route of, um, let me see. What's the other spots you have? What, what are the other spots you can make money? Publishing, which Publishing is the hardest. <laughs> That's the hardest of all of them. So I want to give an option to people to be able to create that same momentum and that same career in this music industry. 